Hello, I'm Dr. Josh Latatsky. I'm the Great Lakes Eye Consultant with Valley Contacts, and I'm also a professor at the Michigan College of Optometry at Ferris State University. Today I want to talk to you about toric periphery scleral lenses and what makes them so great. You know, when we think back of what do you need in a contact lens to meet your patient's desires, you know, if we could reach into a magic bag and pull out the things that we're going to need to make that happen, we want to have a lens that's super comfortable. They have to be able to wear it throughout the day. If it's uncomfortable, they're not going to wear it. Doesn't matter how great the vision is. Look at corneal GPs. Corneal GPs provide outstanding optics. However, they're not very comfortable. If you ask a patient that's wearing a corneal GP to rate their comfort on a scale of one to 10, they're usually going to rate it around three or four. To me, that's not acceptable. I wouldn't want to wear something that I'm only telling you is three out of 10. We need something better. And that's where sclerals come into market. Looking back at the history of scleral contact lenses, they were originally manufactured using eye molding. So the patient was anesthetized, plaster was applied to the front surface of the eye and allowed to harden. From that plaster, a mold was generated that was in the shape of the patient's eye. Next, an acetate plate was held in a water bath to heat up and then pressed over the mold created for the eye. And in doing so, we have what the shape of the eye truly is. That mold was then trimmed and polished, and there's our contact lens. And if we look back at the shape of the lens that came out of that whole process, it's very obvious that it's not symmetrical. Yet, a lot of the lenses that are on the market today do have symmetric peripheries. And we probably forgot what we actually knew back in the day. Because what happened is, scleral lenses kind of fell out of favor, soft contact lenses came on the marketplace, and we went years and years and years without really looking at the whole shape of the eye. You know, the soft lens is very malleable and able to reshape itself to the shape of the eye. So it didn't really matter exactly what the eye shape was, the lens was gonna fit. Fast forward to about 10 years ago when we start getting back into scleral lenses, once the new technologies came out with better materials and better lathes to be able to cut these lenses, and we started off fresh. Lenses were made spherical, um, and they performed pretty well. Um, I'm not saying you can't use a spherical lens on a patient's eye. The conjunctival is very spongy, so if the lens doesn't match it exactly, there are some slop in the system that's going to allow the lens to still fit okay. It's not going to do some of the great things we want it to as far as have the lens be perfectly stable, possibly have problems controlling tear exchange and things like that that we'll talk about, but the lens will work. And that's why we were getting away with spherical peripheral lenses for so long. What we're finding now by transitioning to a more torque peripheral lens is we're getting much more stability, uh, much more ability to control the optics on the eye and much happier patients. Obviously patients aren't gonna wanna sit through the molding process to get this exact shape. So how do we go about figuring out what the shape of the patient's eye really is? If we think back to some of the instruments we have currently available to us, the keratometer is gonna provide us information of about central three to four millimeters of the cornea probably not enough information to fit a scleral lens that's more in the 16 millimeter range. So we need something else. So our corneal topographer is a great instrument. It's kind of a mainstay in the uh, field of fitting contact lenses. But for scleral lenses, it doesn't give us enough data. It gives us 11 to 12 millimeters, gets us out into the peripheral part of the eye, but not quite far enough to where our scleral lens is actually sitting. So what we've kind of transitioned to is using a lot of anterior segment OCT imaging. That gives us data for about 15 millimeters, maybe 16 millimeters, depending on the instrument. With that, we're able to fit our contact lens much more effectively. We're also able to get a much better idea what the eye actually looks like. When you look at the image here, you can see how much more data is available than there would be with a corneal topographer. One of the things other studies have shown is actually if you have the patient eccentrically fixate with your OCT instrument, you can get out even farther and you can get more like a 22 millimeter or so cord. And now we have a strong feel for what the eye shape really is. And when you look at the image, you can clearly see, very similar to what our eye molded lenses were showing, that the nasal side of the eye is much higher than the temporal side. That nasal side being higher than the temporal side is one of the things that causes a problem when we start talking about fitting spherical peripheral contact lenses on these eyes. The lens is gonna shift or dig into the eye because of that asymmetry across that region. By having a lens that has a toric periphery, we can get the lens to align much, much more smoothly with that peripheral part of the eye and therefore perform much better for us. We can also use the OCT to visualize what the lens looks like on the eye in most cases, depending on which instrument you have. 
Here's an image showing a lens with a spherical periphery, and you can clearly see how that lens is shifted in the temporal direction. The clearance over the limbal area is substantially less on the nasal side than the temporal side. Well, I don't think that's going to be a major health problem for the patient, it is going to be a problem for the fact the optics aren't going to be centered on the eye. It could also be a comfort issue for them. When we look at a toric peripheral lens, we see how much better the centration is. The clearance over the nasal side of the limbus, the clearance over the temporal side of the limbus are fairly equal. And that's kind of what we're going for in a lens that's going to be more stable on the eye. So in addition to keeping the optics centered over top of the eye, it's also going to help us get the lens aligned in the periphery. And having the lens aligned in the periphery can overcome one of the biggest complaints I get with scleral lenses. If I had a nickel for every time somebody came up to me and said, how do I solve the fogging problem behind a contact lens, I could probably retire. Um, we're still searching for the answer to some extent because what, what works for one patient doesn't work for everyone, but I can tell you what works the most often for us is to get the lens to be more aligned 360. Um, we can do that by having that toric periphery on the back surface of the lens. So what typically happens in a case when we're getting foggy behind the lens is tears are flowing from the anterior surface back behind the contact lens and forming a debris. And that fogging tends to bother patients sometimes after a few minutes, mostly after an hour or two, to the point where the patient's taking the lens out two or three times a day. They're usually still accepting to be able to do that, but let's try to make it so that they don't have to make that same compromise. You don't need any special equipment to diagnose the fogging. Your slit lamp is more than enough. You can clearly see the debris film forming behind the contact lens, and that's the same fog that the patient's looking through. If you did want to use an OCT for it, it'll show the same kind of thing where the, the tear lens becomes more and more pacified throughout the day in a case where they're getting the fogging problem. The OCT does help us look at the edges a little bit closer. So if you're going to use an OCT, um, you can see whether the lens is aligning to the periphery or not. Um, in this case here, we see that across the horizontal portion of the lens, the lens is landing nice and smooth across the conjunctival surface, whereas the vertical image shows that the lens is barely in contact with that tissue and making a clear spot for tears to flow behind and bring that debris in, causing the fogging. If we go to a toric periphery, like in this example, we see how much better that lens looks aligned in the periphery. That no longer has a spot for the tears to flow behind. We've essentially sealed it up and made it for a much more stable, comfortable vision throughout the day for the patient. But I know what you're saying. What if I don't have an OCT in my office? What can I do to still make that diagnosis, to still be able to figure out what's wrong with the lens? Well, my number one tip for you is to make sure the patient's had the lens on for an hour or two so it's completely settled into the conjunctiva. Take fluorescine. We all have fluorescine in our offices. Put a drop of fluorescine on the front surface of the contact lens and, wait, and sit and wait. Watch for the fluorescine to flow behind the lens. If the lens, if the lens is sealed 360, you won't get fluorescine behind the lens. If it's not sealed, you'll be able to see clearly where the fluorescein comes in from. Now, in cases of severe fogging, it'll happen almost instantaneously, kind of like this image here. But in other cases, it may take a little bit longer. It may take five minutes before the fluorescein works behind there. But the fact that you're seeing fluorescein behind the lens tells you the tears are making their way back there, and that's probably the source of the fogging for your patient. So those are the areas of the lens that you're going to want to target your adjustment on. If it's coming in through the horizontal, focus on the horizontal portion of the lens. If it's coming in through the vertical, which seems to be the most common spot, then you're going to want to focus on the vertical portion of the lens. So the other thing we mentioned to provide for the patient is great optics. And the best way to do it is having toric optics on the front surface of the lens. I know in my practice, we've really transitioned from being a spherical periphery practice three, four years ago to being 95% patients wearing toric back surface lenses. We also have about 40 to 50% of our patients in toric front optics on the contact lens. If we do an overrefraction and find that they have astigmatism coming through, it's very simple to add the toric front optics on the lens because that toric periphery in the back surface locks the lens into place, having a nice consistent vision for the patient throughout the day. So one of the ways to make sure that that's going to work for your patient is to look at the laser marks that are on the lens see where they are on, located on there, take the lens and spin it out of position and make sure that they go back into the same spot. If they go back into the same spot, we can do LARS just like we do on our, all of our soft toric fits to adjust for that toric rotation of the lens. Now keep in mind, 
when we're used to seeing soft contact lenses that rotate maybe five, 10 degrees at the most, sclerals aren't gonna align perfectly horizontal and vertical. Most of the time, they're gonna be spun 30 to 40 degrees temporal. And that's perfectly fine. As long as it's consistent, we can adjust the optics, move the lens into place, and have a good, stable vision for the patient throughout the day. Patients wear lenses for long hours, and it needs to be consistent throughout that time for them in order to be able to be something that they're gonna to wanna to wear. And then finally, if we have all these great qualities, the lens also needs to be affordable. If it costs thousands of dollars, the average patient's not going to be able to afford it. So we need a lens that's comfortable, provides good vision, stable throughout the day, and good affordability. So the question is, does that product exist today on the marketplace? And my answer, yes, it does. The custom stable lens from Valley Contacts is able to do all those things we mentioned. It provides great vision, it provides great comfort, it's stable throughout the day. And because it is custom made for your patient, it's available in a wide, ra wide range of parameters. We're able to treat large refractive errors. We're able to treat astigmatism. We're able to help patients that have keratoconus or pellucid marginal degeneration, patients that have undergone corneal transplants, patients that have had refractive surgeries that haven't gone the way they wanted to, now have a lens that we can provide the vision that they deserve. Well, thank you for watching the video today. I hope you learned something. I hope it also inspired you to go out and try Toric Peripheral Scleral Contact Lens if you haven't done that already. I think it'll be game-changing for you and for your patients.